we're going off my cuff again off my cuff i got a cuff a shoulder cuff but it's a cuff so we can talk hey y'all it's gord your happy hurting hippie and it has been just slightly over three months pharmaceutical free after eight years of having some of the worst stuff in me i'm free i'm free and i'm happy I am old, but I'm happy. That's uh, Cat Stevens, Yusef Islam. Anyways, let's start. We are going to talk about this, but let's start with something that helped me get off, and that's cannabis. Something that helped me get off of the strong net the bad meds, the bad side effects. And the more we start learning and looking at reality testing rather than end result testing, factual testing, is that opiates often are causing chronic pain because they lessen your body's own internal ability to recover. Marijuana enhances your body's ability to recover. This here is Northern Lights Rosin from MMJ. I didn't squish the rosin. No. They did. And it is squished from bubble hash. And it is beautiful. Now, the reason I bring it up is Joey, shout out Joey, has asked that I speak a little bit more on it. And since I, I don't have the flower, I'm not doing a review on it on Northern Lights right now. I can have a talk and I can talk about it because it is definitely something that a lot of people use. It's really tied to this discussion. It's tied to getting off of opiates or reducing the opiates in your system. Cheers. Anybody and a lot of people have tried this, but I'm giving special shout outs to my friends in Australia where sativa is the norm, nothing is legal, sativa is the norm, and indica is hard to find. So I got to remind myself when I talk about something like this Northern Lights, something very famous, been around forever, and one of the best for pain. For depression, it's absolutely an incredible medicine. And the flavors are beautiful. That I forget, I forget that there's some people out there that barely ever can get a hold of indica, never mind a good one. So I'm going to read you a little bit what, uh, what they say about it, what Leafly says about it. <clears throat> I hope you don't mind. Because it segues into my discussion. And off my cuff is just talking. I have, like all my shows, I have no script. I hope I never write a script. Anyways, Northern Light stands among the most famous strains of all time. A pure indica cherished for its resinous buds. Fast flowering. Here, let's get some better sound here. Sorry, guys, I got this really good microphone and I sometimes don't use it. Northern Light stands among the most famous strains of all time. A pure indica cherished for its resinous buds. Fast flowering and resilience during growth. It's a descendant of indigenous Afghani and Thai land race strains. Northern Lights has given rise to famous hybrids like Sour D. Shiva Skunk, and Super Silver Haze. Rumor has it that Northern Lights was sprouted near Seattle, Washington, but was propagated out of Holland after 1985 at what is now called Sensi Seeds. Pungently sweet, spicy aromas radiate from the crystal-coated buds which sometimes reveal themselves in hues of purple. Northern Lights psychoactive effects settle in firmly throughout the body, relaxing muscles and pacifying the mind 
in a dreamy euphoria. And dreamy is the right word. Comfortable laziness allows patients to relieve pain and sleeplessness, while its mellow contentment roots out depression and stress. Several Northern Lights phenotypes circulate the market, but Sensi Seeds recommends a general flowering time of 45 to 60 days. I will say this is one of the most dreamy kind of highs. Really, really relaxing. I can see that this is, I shared one of the first reviews I read on this, and I like reading reviews when I'm shopping for something for my pain. Um, one of the reviews on this really, really struck me, and I'm going to see if it's still there on the main list. Yeah, here it is. I'm a 60-year-old male who has had two back surgeries and have a my myopathy called pump disease. I'm about at the end of my time here on Earth as this disease progresses, and the best medicine I have found to relieve the pain has come from this plant. I was on the normal protocol of opiates from my doctor for years, and then I tried this strain. You know, that says it all. That says it all. And since I got it, every time that my anxiety starts to come up, because I'm really fighting off depression, I'm fighting off that winter depression, and just depression that makes no sense because I'm in a good start of, I'm in my second year of being single, I, I'm grasping it, I'm loving it, I'm living it. But I have to accept that I have chemical depressions in my brain that, that sometimes bring in depression and I need to fight it. This is a beautiful thing to fight it with. Beautiful thing. I, I, MMJ right now doesn't have the flower, only the rosin. I hope to have the flower soon. Anyways, this was not a review. This was not a review. We're going to have another taupe. This time I'm going to have Girl Scout cookies. Rosin that I made from MMJ's flower. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Cheers. Excuse me, Big McBird. Platinum Girl Scout cookies. Oh, that's a beautiful flavor. Oh. I love nice flavor to these things. There's no reason we can't enjoy taking our medicine. It doesn't all have to taste like Buckley's, you know? Uh, and the segue right back into medicine. Yes, it has been three months three glorious months they were difficult months that first month to six weeks especially because one of the ones i was coming off of was ciprolex was horrible horrible even though i took four months to reduce my use of ciprolex down to zero from zero Four or five weeks was hell. Hell. Uh, I don't know. If, if you've got a doctor telling you you really need Ciprolex or Wellbutrin or Propanolol or, or to Topomax, those are the four main that I've been on for five to eight years, and they're hell. They're hell. And anything, if a doctor's going to prescribe that you start taking something, at least ask them, when I'm supposed when am I supposed to stop taking it for how long should do you think I should take it when am I supposed to stop taking it and will stop will that stoppage be difficult those things aren't discussed when they are prescribing pharmaceuticals to you I even when I when I first went into my depressive states and they first put me on Wellbutrin I said to my doctor, I don't want any opiates. I don't want that. I'm n I'm a natural guy. And he, hmm. and I love this guy. I love this guy. I, I don't think he'd do this again because he's learned a lot since then. And he was a bril is a brilliant man. But at that point, he said, Gordon, if you were 
dying of pneumonia, you would not say, I want to die naturally, don't give me penicillin, that'll save my life. This is about the same thing. And you know what? It wasn't. It wasn't. And there wasn't enough information for me to make my decision. But he had more knowledge than me, different knowledge than me, and I accepted it. And I went through years of trouble. I would never, ever again allow a doctor to prescribe me something like that. Yes, they'll still prescribe me a few things. You know, there may be times that I'm, I might need an antibiotic. Uh, even that, my, I'm glad my doctor tries never to, to pr prescribe those. But, you know, so where I, am I three months later? Do I think I'm free and clear of them? I really don't. I think that the Ciprolex is still hunting around inside the head. The, the loss of it is still floating around in there. Um, if you go back in my videos to some of my other talks on pharmaceuticals and my attempt at reducing down to zero, uh, you will find that I went through a lot of brain zaps. This, this, this. But you don't hear it. You feel it inside your head. You hear it inside your head. Really strange, really strange. They still happen, but very seldom. So I do think that there, that the, that my reaction to my loss of that in my life will happen for a long time. Just keep getting further and further between. So if a doctor's prescribing, please look further. I'm no medical expert. I am only a victim. And I do say I'm a victim. I'm a victim of pharmaceuticals. I think my own doctor was a victim of pharmaceuticals. Now that he has seen the change that medical cannabis made in me, a year ago, a year and about six months ago, it's been a year and a half. Yeah, it's been a year and a half, December. He and I decided together the pharmaceuticals were not working for me and were hurting my life, my personal life too, uh, tearing apart my family because of my moods and, and lack of many abilities uh, that pharmaceuticals bring you. It was tearing apart my marriage. So we decided together that, hey, let's test out this other avenue which meant it would take a year or so to get fully off the pharmaceuticals and let the cannabis start. December, a year and a half ago, I had a cane. Never did I go without a cane. I brought the cane. I had a cane in the truck and I had a cane at home. That way, no matter where I went, I was walking with a cane. Always a lot of pain. And... A really grumpy kind of asshole. Uh, I, I can tell you Ciprolex, any of those SSRI uptake inhibitors, whatever you want to call them, they wreck your mood. They change who you are. So, But I was in a cane and I didn't go hardly anywhere. Fast forward to today. My cane is by the door. It has a lot of dust on it. Yeah, I don't dust in that area. <laughs> Busted. But it hasn't been used. It hasn't been used at all. I almost thought of it for a while there while I was low on meds and not medicating properly. The pains were coming back. And, and the cane provides some support while walking, especially when you have joint problems. Yeah, <laughs> Joint problems. <laughs> Lack of joints. And... Uh, but I have not used the cane in easily four or five months. Cannabis has changed my life. I, I now have no pharmaceuticals. And yes, I made a decision. And because of that decision, because the government doesn't, doesn't treat it, they, the courts have said it is exactly the same as any other medicine. But our government 
has yet to treat it as such. So therefore, this choice has become costly to me. It has cost me a lot more money to be medicated by cannabis than through the normal cycle. And I hate the word normal. Uh, that was a decision I had to make and a decision that is very difficult to make when you're a low income on disability pension person. I've had to give up a lot of my life, yes, to support my medicine, not to support a habit. People have to understand that. This took, this made me healthy again. Of course I'm gonna stay the route. I'll never go back to pharmaceuticals. I'll stay in pain and just stay in bed all day if I can't get any medicine, rather than go back to pharmaceuticals. So my friends, three months pharma free, I'm happy. If you ever have questions, let me know. I'll do the best to research them or find out somebody who has the answer for you. Peace and cheers, love and harmony from your hurting hippie to you.